And I wouldn't like to speak on behalf of CDA. I mean, I, th I think what's interesting now um, is that, you know, it's, it's been taken up so widely in so many different disciplines that it's now become something that, in a sense, thank goodness, could, could no longer be controlled if anyone wanted to. And I don't think people think you want it. So it, it, it will go in all sorts of directions, I think. And that's, that's good, and it will, it will mean that, that you know, it ends up in probably all sorts of unrecognizable forms. But if it continues with the, you know, the basic sort of or, orientations towards language as part of the social that broadly most practitioners are, are after, then that's fine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't, I mean, all I can say about future directions for CDA generally is it's obviously um, a, a greater disciplinary diversity. I mean, there are, there are people from goodness knows how many disciplines, very often working on their own, doing particular research projects without anyone in their institutions who can supervise, and there are these people's thousands probably all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, it's difficult for them to do it, but people are doing it in that way. And um, one can write, it's good to pull some of that together, and this new journal we've started critical discourse studies, part of the point of that was to try and not pull it together in the sense of normalize it, but give people a, 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 a space where a lot of very different work has a home, so to speak. Um, without trying to impose any uh, any any discipline. Well, not, I, I suppose trying to get people to address uh, or, or not to ignore issues that are coming up in the field. So, we're, I suppose what we're saying in the journal is you may not be doing much textual analysis, but at least maybe you should be aware that whether you do or not is an issue. I don't want to say institutionalized. You know, I want it to become a tool for people to think through existing problems and just being able to um, use um, particular conceptualizations, particular formulations of CBA in order to pose old questions in new ways and be able to answer them by giving just a little bit more insight that has been given so far. So I want it to be a living way of thinking. Mm. And, uh, what is the danger of being institutionalized? I mean, the danger with every, um, every uh, process of institutionalization is that things are under risk of becoming the norm. And once something becomes the norm, it uh, doesn't give you the, um, the opportunity anymore to push it to the limits, to question it fundamentally, and therefore to move on by continuously, you know, Radicalizing your thought. What's critical about critical discourse analysis is that um, you focus on texts and practices that um, play a key role in, um, in the maintenance and or production, you know, of uh, social relationships and. You choose the ob an object uh, where you feel that uh, particular social racism or practices are problematic in crisis, you know, uh, or worse. You know. So um, you choose the thing from a point of view that the thing intellectual uh, intellectuals ought to be able to say something about this, and make an intervention uh, with opening people's eyes, a potential for change. We don't necessarily have to change the world. We change the world also. Well, or not, so teaching, it's not, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do political intervention, you know. But um, you can change the world not only by changing the system, but also by making people read differently and wake, uh, making them wake up. So I'm already very content if the critical uh, result is that people say to me, I look at these kind of things very differently now, and um, I, or I don't believe every word anymore um, I read in the newspaper. Um, that is the kind of um, contribution that critical, one of the contributions that critical discourse, and that's, that's what makes it critical, uh, are the contributions that critical discourse analysis can make.
critical discourse analysis uh, needs to be um, uh, always intellectually developing um, as the world changes. Um, and one of the things that's become increasingly important in the last few decades is um, uh, that the uh, that nation states are part of uh, international systems and that strongly influences their economy, um, uh, their uh, internal cultural politics, the fate of schooling, and so forth. Um, I think one of the things that's um, this important is that critical discourse analysis, um, for reasons that are perfectly understandable, has tended to be focused on um, what might be called the North Atlantic, Europe and North America. And I think if you look at something like uh, Blomert's work, uh, Discourse Analysis, or a recent uh, book on uh, 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 globalization, social linguistics and globalization, what you see is an effort to, to um, understand uh, relationships between um, what's called the, the global north and the global south as part of the critical discourse analysis. And there is another tendency to see critical discourse analysis like a perspective. And the idea of critical studies, or critical discourse studies, is in this line, because perspective is something more than, more open. And maybe in this, in, if we follow this line, maybe, as also Mengeno says, maybe there is a new, something new, a new field with critical discourse analysis, with uh, interacting with other perspectives. I've come to realize, and again, this is going to have to be a task probably for somebody else because I'm old, is that we do not have any good analytic tools for true multimodality. That is, the, you know, handling of something like a video game. By the way, it's like opera. You know, the trouble with opera is it had every genre in it, right? Well, so do video games. I mean, you've got stories, you've got images, you've got moving images, you've got players producing the stuff. So uh, we don't have analytic techniques for that. It's going to be the next generation, and uh, Gunther's stuff is just a start. And, um, you know, I certainly look at uh, games and stuff through the lens of my discourse analysis, but I haven't developed the techniques. And uh, we've heard even at this conference that I'm at here, where there's now a lot of sessions on video games and digital media, uh, that we don't have good ways of analyzing multimodality. Jay Limke's done some fabulous stuff, but with this we're at the very beginning. And here is an area where somebody, you know, making up a discourse analytic approach to true multimodality, which is almost certainly going to have to be the study of practice. Yeah, but giving us a language to do that is probably going to be a great task for some young person to do. What is the society likely to be like? On the one hand, what is it like now? Um, and what is it likely to be like? Um, now, critical discourse analysis, uh, just to, to, to voice my one other uh, critique of critical discourse analysis, in critical discourse analysis, you look at what has happened. Yeah? You look at texts which have been made. Um, so you look at the past. Now, you look at the texts which have been made by others. Um, so you look at the texts which have been made out of the agendas that others have had. That's a backward-looking enterprise. Yeah? Inevitably, that's, that's, that's what it has to be. <laughs> you look at, let's say, textual objects, uh, which are made, and they, they were made out of the agendas of others. Well, that's fair enough. I want to look at um, what, ought, what could be done in order to shape the future. Um, I want to um, be able to, to, to say, um, in relation to the kinds of um, um, aims, political aims, let's say, that I have for the future, I would like um, those who pass through educational institutions to have the means to influence, to, to be able to shape, not only me, but, but those other people to, to shape their futures. Uh, of course, I know that um, the means of shaping the future is infin infinitesimally small for any one individual. And yet, it is important that each individual in the infinitesimally small way that she or he can has the means of shaping the future. Um, yeah, it's it's like a it's like a, an, a you know a sailing boat. You've got the, the, the rudder and with a long handle. Um, is it is it is it sufficient if 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 the the rudder of your society 
has only one hand on it, or should there be three hands on it, or should the hands of everybody be on there? And the direction of the boat is actually then uh, the, eff the effect of the sum total of all the hands that are on there. But all the hands can only be on there if all those who have their hand on there have a sense of what could be done or where the boat might be going. So that's for me the, the, the point about education. So I see curriculum, curriculum not now, as it had been seen as the means for reproducing the young in the image of, uh, of their culture. That's silly because the, the culture, by the time we've attempted to do that, the culture is already somewhere else. It's moving too fast for us to have curriculum as, re as reproduction. Um, so curriculum now has to be designed. Curriculum is the design for social futures. Uh, yet we, we have to shape a curriculum which actually um, provides the, the generative means for the young um, to have a role in shaping their futures.